Hey guys, it's Tim McCamus. Um, if any of y'all have been checking out our website, uh, we recently added a bunch of new products uh, to our uh, material and fabrication section. So what we've done is uh, we've went through and added um, all kinds of products from uh, 4130 tubing to plate to everything you could imagine to fabricate these cars with. Um, we have all that stuff here, so we wanted to make it available to you guys. And uh, we're going to be digging into some uh, more extensive videos here in, uh, in the next couple weeks, which will get into some more um, detailed fabrication techniques that we use here at the shop. But um, one of the things we get asked for a lot is uh, welding rod selection because uh, there's, uh, there's some information out there that's hard to come by on what, what rod you would use for what application. So I've got some, uh, some steel rods here on the table in front of me. Now, we have a large selection of welding rod from stainless to aluminum to titanium, uh, silicon bronze, um, steel rods. These are actually mild steel. Um, and there's, there's different types and there's different sizes. So we have those in, in all of the different materials, we have different diameter rods. So um, we have everything like in, in the uh, steel rods. This is, um, this is an 045, and then this is a 1 and this is a 3 seconds. So the size and the makeup of the rod are gonna depend on what you're doing with it. So for instance, a really common rod for us is this 16th. And um, we have a 16th diameter. We have this in an ER70 S2, which is um, one of the most common rods we use in the shop. Now we're gonna use that for all of the chassis welding and all the components that go on the chassis. So we use uh, 4130 tubing, but we use a um, mild steel welding rod. So this is an ER70 S2 rod. And the diameter is really going to depend on how good you are at fitting the tube. So a 332nd rod here is going to be used if uh, the fit is not quite as good and you've got a little bit of a gap that you need to fill. Um, if you use the smaller rod, you've got to really pour it in there to try to get your puddle established. But the 332nd is a large enough diameter that uh, you can dip it in there and get you a nice uh, puddle going if you've got a little bit of a gap. So. The small size here, the 045, we really don't use that to weld on uh, the chassis as much as we would use it to weld like uh, sheet metal to the chassis. So for instance, like the driver's side floor, that's going to be a sheet metal that, that has to be welded in. So for the real requirements, it's got to be welded into the chassis. You've got a real thin sheet that you're welding to uh, different diameters and different wall thicknesses of tube. Our standard for something like that is we will weld an inch and then skip two. So when we lay that out, we'll, we'll mark an inch, then skip two inches, then mark an inch. And that's kind of our pattern that we lay out around that sheet metal. And when you do that, what you want to do is we call it a little zip tack, which is just a, a like a little fusion tack on the end of each one inch mark because you don't want to start welding that and then the sheet metal starts to roll up. So even though you're using a small rod, if that metal starts to pull up, then your weld's going to look all humped up and your material's not going to lay nice and flat. So you go around there and you just take the, the tungsten and you just zip tack it on each of the one inch marks and that'll hold that down tight so that you can go back through and weld that. A lot of times we'll even put a small uh, zip tack in the middle of that one inch so that we're going to, so that we have no chance of that pulling up when we're welding it. And so this, uh, this 045 uh, ER70S2 rod is perfect for that. The chassis stuff, the 1 16th, is a nice size for that for a decent fit. Um, not quite as good of a fit. You can use 332nd, or if you're actually welding some heavier wall tube together where you're welding like 083 to 083, you might want to use a little more heat and use a 332nd rod because you, you, want the, you want the weld puddle not to be too big, but you don't want it to be concave either you want it to you want to have enough filler material on there so that you've got a nice weld uh, bead structure that's going to uh, fill that uh, that joint nicely so the 70 uh, material is going to be used for all general welding on the chassis but then we also have an er80 s2 rod which um, which we only use in one part of the chassis which is the four link brackets and really just the adjustable four link brackets because the the standard plate brackets with the holes in them, they are the same material. They're gonna be a normalized 4130. 
So we'll use a 70S rod there. For instance, if we're welding on the four-link brackets, you might want to use a 330 seconds because you're going to be welding a quarter-inch bracket on. You're going to need some more heat. Um, and, and you're welding it to an 083 tube, so you can put a little heat to it and use, um, use a 332nd rod to make a nice bead. But that, uh, those adjustable brackets, um, that base uh, part of the bracket that welds to the chassis, it's harder. It's a harder material. So we want to use an ER80S rod for that. So we keep uh, the 80 in just a 1 16th diameter, and um, that's what we'll use exclusively to weld those brackets on. So we've got um, lots of different uh, welding rod options and lots of different uh, um, places that we use them on the car. So um, everything from the titanium to the stainless, we use the stainless on the headers and titanium, obviously, on all the titanium parts. Um, we've got some silicon bronze, uh, which is a very low heat rod that we'll use. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of strength, so you need to be careful where you use it. You can use it if you're welding like sheet metal to sheet metal or something where you just want a real low heat and it'll put like a, um, a almost like a bronze brass looking material on the part and uh, you, it requires almost no heat to get that to uh, turn into a puddle but uh, we don't use it very much but it does have its applications um, most of the time we're going to use this mild steel rod for just about everything so uh, check out the different sizes and if you have any questions to uh, expand on this, you can uh, call us anytime and our guys will help you out.